Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, welcome to yet another practical session where we are learning spatial statistics and spatial econometrics with R. Today's topic is working with spatial data. My name is Saif Ali. Before I get into today's topic, I would like to recap uh, as usual uh, that excellence and mastery in spatial statistics or really any other subject is gained by a combination of understanding and skill. And while understanding is gained by listening, reading, thinking, and reflecting or writing, skill is acquired by actually doing, trying, failing, writing code, trying again. And <clears throat> the, way to, the, the wrong way to acquire skill or the, the way not to acquire skill is by just simply watching the videos or reading many books. If you do that, you might acquire a lot of information, but not a lot of skill. So I encourage you as we're going through these videos to use pause and play frequently. And when I say play, I don't mean just play the video, actually play with the code. So as I'm writing code, pause the video, stop me. Uh, you can stop me anytime you want using the pause button uh, and go and play with the code. Uh, try different versions of it, try and break it. Um, and then once you're done, you're, you're fairly confident, you can come back and play some more of the video. So you should be going back and forth. You should have two windows open, your, the, the window in which you're watching this video, your browser or whatever, uh, and another window where you have RStudio, uh, and you should be going back and forth and trying stuff out for yourself. With that said, what should you already know and what are you going to learn in this session? Well, what you should know uh, in terms of conceptual understanding, you should be familiar with the idea and concept of spatial location, especially a 2D uh, locations on a two dimensional XY plane. Uh, you should be familiar with coordinate systems, uh, how to locate a point on a 2D plane. Um, and uh, you should be familiar with the types of spatial data. And when I say the types of spatial data, I don't mean uh, data types in R. I don't mean data frames, numerics, literals. I mean the spatial data, the types of spatial data that you've learned in this course. I mean geostatistical data, lattice data, and point pattern data. So you should know the difference uh, between these three. If you don't know, I encourage you to go back and watch the appropriate video in this very course and learn uh, what these three different uh, types of spatial data, what they mean. In terms of skills, what should you have already done? Well, you should already have installed R. You should have installed the necessary packages, GSTAT and SP. They should be familiar to you by now. You should have also loaded the Muse data set, which is the data that we're going to work with. And so far, we worked with it as tabular data. So if for us, the Muse data set was basically just a table. It was just rows and columns uh, that contained some data. Uh, but we want to go further. We don't want to look at simply as tabular data anymore. We actually uh, want to look at it as spatial data. So we want to look at it as a data that has a spatial location associated with each observation. So this is something that should be crystal clear to you after you finish today's video, is that there is a difference between just some tabular data that you have in a table versus spatial data, where every observation is necessarily associated to a particular spatial location. So remember that, that spatial data means that every observation is associated with some location. It, is, it occurred at some spatial location. So space is inherit, inherently part of the data. And we're going to see how to manage that in R how to convert regular tabular data to spatial data. And then we're going to see the difference that there are, there, there are two different kinds of data types. And then we will make a spatial plot, which will show you uh, the spatial distribution of the data 
which as you will see will be more informative than simply a histogram. So if that, that much is clear, if you don't have any of the prerequisites that I just described, if you have uh, not installed R, you, you don't know what the packages are, please go back and review the previous videos and make sure you've gotten to this point before you go any further. So now would be a good time to pause and make sure that you've got all the prerequisites in place. All right, so I'm gonna go to my R Studio, in which I have some code that I have written for you, uh, which we will go through line by line as usual. Um, so you already know what this does. Uh, we have to load our libraries and then load the data set called news and uh, remind me what this, uh, this, this function here does, class news, what are we doing here? Uh, uh, you, you should know this by now. Uh, basically, we want to see what kind of variable is muse? What is its data type? And we see that muse is a data frame. And a data frame is basically another word for tabular data. It's data that's organized as rows and columns. Uh, every row is a different observation. Every column is a variable. Columns can be of different data types, but within the same column, all of the data has to be of the same type. Uh, this is all stuff from last time. So, <clears throat> so far so good. Uh, we have a tabular data set in a data frame called Muse, but that's not what we want. We actually want spatial data. We want to associate every observation with some spatial location. So, let's start by making a copy of our data set. So, let's make a new variable called Muse.sp. So the .sp, as you guessed correctly, stands for spatial. So we want to make a spatial version of the same data. So let's start by making a copy. And this operator here, this arrow, left arrow operator here, which is the uh, less than sign and a hyphen. Uh, what this, this is similar to an equals operator. It assigns the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So what this does is, it takes your muse data frame and simply copies it to a new variable called muse.sp. So now we're going to make changes to this muse.sp. So what, what change do we want? We want to convert uh, muse.sp, which is currently still a tabular variable, to a spatial data format. And the way we do that is using a command called coordinates. And coordinates is a command if you look at the help manual for coordinates, uh, coordinates is a command uh, that comes from the SP package. This is a package that we've already loaded, and this is a package that provides uh, methods for spatial data. So in our documentation, if you, the function name is given first, and then within curly brackets, it tells you the package name. So our function is called coordinates, and the package that it comes from is called SP, and you can read this description to see what it does. Basically what it does in short is that it assigns coordinates for every observation in the dataset Muse. Um, and how does it assign coordinates? Well, it takes them from the data itself. If you remember, if you look at the Muse.sp, uh, if you look at the Muse dataset, then the first two variables are called X and Y. So these are locations. These are the locations at which these observations were made. So for example, in row number one, you have a location and then a bunch of observations for cadmium, copper, lead, and zinc concentrations and some other variables. So that means is that these are the concentrations that were found at that particular location. So we already have coordinates in our tabular data, but we need to tell R where to find them. So we use a formula. This is called a formula. Anything that starts with this squiggly tilde operator is called a formula in R. Um, I'm not going to go into what a formula actually is, but just know that this is a formula. And what this is telling R to do is to pick up the X and Y coordinates from the X and Y variables inside 
the data frame. So it's going to treat these two as the spatial coordinates of these observations. Um, so if you run this, um, well, I, I'm getting an error because, so let's read the error. Setting coordinates cannot be done on spatial objects where they've already been set. Well, so the reason is because I've already done this previously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this muse.sp object and I'm going to repeat this procedure just so you can see it. So I'm going to recreate it by copying the data from muse and then I'm going to run this coordinate command here and now it has assigned coordinates using the x and y data. So if you now look at the class of muse.sp, it's something called a spatial points data frame. So that's different from muse, right? The class of muse is simply a data frame, but muse.sp is a spatial points data frame. It contains exactly the same data, but now R has been made aware that it contains a special sort of data, and in this case, it contains spatial data. So if you want to work with spatial data in R, uh, you're going to have to become familiar with spatial data formats. Um, and this particular one is called spatial points because our data is made up of points. Uh, we have the, locate, uh, the concentrations of these heavy metals at different points. Each observation is a point. You can also have grids, polygons, other, other geometric entities. But in this case, we have spatial points. And for each point, we have some data. So muse.sp is a spatial points data frame. And here I've shown you uh, that you can do almost anything with muse.sp that you can do with muse. So a spatial points data frame is also a data frame. So it's, it's, it's a more specific sort of data frame. So for example, you can examine the, uh, the, 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 you can use the bracket operator to examine individual elements. You can look at individual columns. Um, uh, this is all stuff that we had done with tabular data. So you can just do the same stuff with spatial data. Uh, this is the zinc column. Uh, if you want to look at only the first few, you can do a head command. Uh, so you can, do, you can do summary stats for zinc. You can do all the same stuff. So nothing much changes except that R now treats the data as spatial data. Um, yeah, you can compute variance, standard deviation. You can even make a histogram. So remember this histogram from last time. Uh, it tells you uh, the frequency distribution of zinc concentrations. Now here's, here's what I want to bring your attention to. Uh, we want to make a spatial plot. So the histogram tells us nothing about space. We don't know how these values are distributed in space. And that's what we want to see. So we're going to use this function called bubble. Uh, this, this function makes a bubble plot um, using the muse spatial points data frame. And it looks at the zinc column only. And uh, it uses some colors. Uh, we've provided some colors. And this, we've provided a title for our plot. So if I run this, uh, we see that it creates a spatial plot of zinc concentrations. So how do we interpret this plot? Uh, well, uh, each point is an observation which has been mapped to some location in space, remember, because now we know uh, where, where it occurs in space. Um, and the size of the bubble, the size of the circle, tells you the magnitude of zinc concentration. So this plot, uh, uh, in addition to telling you about the magnitudes, also tells you about the spatial distribution. So it gives you richer information or different information than the histogram. Um, that's all the code that I'm going to look at today. Uh, before I go to my discussion, please pause the video and make sure that you can get this far on your own. And further, maybe. If you try some other things, you, you can get further. So let's go back. So just to summarize, you know, today we saw, uh, last time we saw how to make a histogram. We did it using the hist command. 
um, and it told us about the frequency distribution, about how the magnitudes of zinc con concentrations are distributed, but it told us nothing about their spatial distribution. Uh, by doing a little more work, converting our data into a spatial data format, a spatial points data frame, and using the bubble uh, command, uh, we were able to get a spatial plot which tells us about the spatial distribution. And we can kind of examine this and see that, you know, along this line, we see larger circles. And as we get away from this line, the circles start to get smaller. So it seems that there is some pattern. And in the next few sessions, we will start to explore what this pattern means and how we can characterize this pattern using spatial statistics. Um, just a small exercise that I want to leave you with. I want to ask you what type of spatial data is contained in the muse.sp spatial data frame. So try, think about it for yourself for a few minutes and come back and I will give you the answer. The answer is already on the slide. Uh, it is a geostatistical data. And the reason for that is, remember that geostatistical data is defined on a continuous domain. Uh, and zinc concentration has a value at every point in the riverbed. Uh, so the riverbed is a continuous domain. Um, and the type of spatial data depends on the nature of the spatial domain over which the data is defined. So don't get confused uh, because we seem to have individual points. Uh, that's a sample from over the continuous domain. But the type of spatial data is always dependent on the nature of the domain over which the data is defined and not the data type in R that we use to store it. So you should be able to separate the data type. So even though we are storing it as a set of points and we have a set of points, in theory, we could have got infinitely many points over the entire riverbed. So because that's a continuous spatial domain, this is an example of geostatistical data. Um, so just a summary, we converted ordinary data frames to a spatial data frame um, and we plotted a spatial distribution. We compared it with the frequency distribution and we learned how to use the coordinates command, the bubble command uh, and the formula operator uh, and became familiar with a spatial points data frame to work with spatial data in R. Uh, to explore further, I will see you in the next session. Thank you so much for your attention.